All right, we got some breaking news in the NFL where the league and the Players Association have agreed to suspend the joint COVID-19 protocols effective immediately. It means the end of two years, strict rules regarding mask, testing, social distancing, though the memo leaves the door open to reimpose certain aspects of the protocols if warranted. Among the changes, the league will stop mandatory testing regardless of vaccination status and will no longer require masks indoors. Back out here live in Indianapolis, uh, starting from our far right, Pete Prisco, Jason Lockenfora, and Jonathan Jones. JJ, what more can you tell us on this front, the significance of what we learned today? Yeah, so the protocols that they had worked so hard to establish two years ago that they had tweaked and tweaked again and put a couple other volumes and additions out, they're finally gone. Uh, they're done. This is essentially going back to normal, if you will. And I think uh, the question that a lot of scribes, writers, and, and otherwise uh, talking heads are wondering, are you going to be be able to get back in the locker room. I'm told that the NFL believes, yes, writers, scribes, media talking heads, they will be allowed to go back into the locker room. The NFLPA may say something differently because the president of the NFLPA, J.C. Treader, the Brown Center, he's not in yeah. a big favor of uh, guys coming back into the locker room. But frankly, it's not really going to be up to J.C. Treader and the NFLPA because it is not collectively bargained. So for all intents and purposes right now, it does seem that uh, we're going back to life before COVID in the NFL. Yeah, I, and I mean, look, I don't know what's coming tomorrow. Nobody knows what's coming tomorrow. I think the one thing these two years have showed us covering this league and just being alive is that everything's subject to change, and they found ways on the fly uh, going back to the start of the season two years ago to come up with a, a set of rules then and then another set of rules later that year and then new rules for this season. And then obviously when we saw the variant um, start to pop up around the country, different set of rules. And then by the playoffs... Nobody was talking about COVID anymore. So if, if anybody knows where this is going, more power to them. But I, I just want to applaud the league and the union for continuing to be able to, to work together um, to keep this league together and to get as many ga – get all the games played. And most of them played when they were supposed to be played. That's the amazing thing. Yeah. When you look back on – we look back on the last two years, they played all the games. I mean, it's incredible yeah. to think that. Uh, now they're just following the science like you're supposed to do, and they follow the science, and now you can get rid of – uh, mask and everything else involved in this. It's, it's, it, but I, I'm, I disagree with you. I think the locker room's going to stay closed. That's just my personal opinion. I've been around this league a long time, and just talking to the PR guys, I think there's a real feel. And think about this. There's a group of players now, if the, if the life expectancy of an NFL player is four right, years, right. they've had two years where they've never experienced an open locker room. They don't know what it is. Well, so they, when had, you, they might have had it in college. Or, you know how college yeah. is. They're even less yeah. open. So. I, I, I hear you, and it is a little bit cynical. And frankly, I also shared that same belief certainly this past season. Like, yeah, they're never letting us back in the locker room. I've talked with folks in PR about whether we, they always ask me, do you have to be in the locker room? Well, no, you don't have to be. But if there's a holding area right outside the locker room, sure. I don't need to be where the guy's changing. That's right. not the point. And right. if they have an issue with that, I think we can work to some sort of reasonable agreement. But ultimately, there is no really good alternative, right? There is not a holding room outside of every locker room in NFL stadium. Just the same as like press conferences. Do we love press conferences? No. What's the better alternative to get all these questions asked in one setting? One. So you right. kind of deal with it. But you were a beat guy. You were a beat guy. I was yeah. a beat guy. The best stuff you got was when you were in the locker room and you weren't following the pack. You went no, to exactly. a guy standing in his locker and you just There's talked to him about around. life and he would tell you a few things about the team or, yep. or how he's playing or what's going wrong. And if you can't do that anymore, I think it's going to limit uh, what gets A. That's why the NFL probably likes it. It's going to limit what gets out, but it's also going to limit what you can tell the fans as well. So I don't Absolutely. think it's a good and thing. And I go back to Super Bowl, and this is not picking on uh, the Cincinnati Bengals and their fantastic PR staff, but well, you know, we didn't get to speak to an offensive lineman of the Cincinnati Bengals after the Super Bowl. Well, you know, in, in previous times, we would go into a losing locker room with a somber face and talk to the guys and, hey, what went wrong? What was Aaron Donald doing? Well, we were left with quotes from Joe Burrow and uh, CJ Uzama to tell us about the offensive line and sort of take up for them. To your point, Pete, it helps everyone if we are able to go in there and ask them legitimate questions to their face, they can give us legitimate answers. Otherwise, we're just kind of demeaning them after the fact. They were already on their way to their second jobs as turnstiles. So oh, boy. Were, uh, that's, that, that's why wow. you couldn't get them. Human turnstiles. <laughs> can you guys at least remind me or, or enlighten those that may not be in the know? The locker room situation, is that a league-wide thing? Will it be up to the specific teams on their own? How, how does that work, JJ? It, it, so again, it's not collectively bargained. Okay. So we have for years, for decades, just sort of grown accustomed to this. Yeah. And so it was. there's nothing that's ever written down 
down and just, hey, here's what we did. Now teams probably will individually decide they're going to follow the pack. The NFLPA, if they want to make this their number one cause this year to get us out of the locker room, perhaps that we won't be allowed in there and Pete will ultimately be right with a cynical take. I don't even know if it's cynical. I mean, they want to control, the, right, the leagues and the teams want to be able to control the message. And if everybody's on the same Zoom, if everybody's in the same room around the same people, then with cameras rolling and everything's going to be captured forever, that there is no background. There is no off the record. There is no sidling up to someone and just shooting the bull. And I think... By and large, the, the league and the teams are probably okay with that. They're going to be hurt by this. And, and like I always say, if you don't talk to me and I say something or write something about you and you don't like it, you have no recourse. Don't come back to me because I offered you a chance to talk to me and you didn't. As they say in the old, as they said in the old days, rain it down on them, baby. Rain it down Listen, on them. Listen, and we're kind of nerd now here this, with, yeah, with what the media. The COVID discussion. Yeah, you're right. But, but, but to circle back to <laughs> the, COVID part discussion, of the COVID discussion, right. it's it, a big part look, of it. Guys aren't going to miss games anymore right. for, for the flu for COVID, for anything like that. We're not going to have the Aaron Rodgers, Jordan Love situation in Kansas City. None of those things are going to be happening moving forward. Again, it is like, not like COVID never happened, of course, but it is like 2019. All right, let's wrap things up real quickly then with this news today. And even there was a potential boycott because of a bubble, because of COVID things coming into this combine. What, what does that tell us about the league, the PA, and again, moving forward as we get ready for the draft and a new season? Well, I think Jason's right. They, they should be certainly applauded for how well they work together ultimately. Uh, but we've been here at the combine. We've been sitting with these guys before uh, these joints, this joint statement, this memo came out. It was, you know, I'm not six feet from you. Nobody's wearing a mask over right. here, right? And so we, I think that we saw it in L.A., where everyone was supposed to be masked in SoFi Stadium, right? They didn't even give us one. They were supposed to give us one on the way in. They were supposed to give us KN95 masks and all that stuff. I mean, maybe a 1,000 people had a mask on right. there. Maybe. Right. Yes, yeah, no. I, well, I just say we'll, we'll see what the Let's future holds. Let's just be happy it's over, okay? The way it's been, happy it's over. Is that official? Are you officially it's, breaking it's that it's over? Next up, get the mask off the airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> Still work to be done on that front, Pete Frisco, Jason Lockwood for and Jonathan Jones. I'm Tommy Tran. We'll send it back over to Fort Lauderdale. Thanks very much, Tommy. Yes, uh, breaking news here on HQ. The NFL announcing with the Players Association they've agreed to suspend the COVID protocols effective immediately. The new league year begins on March the 16th. So this is good news because a new league year starts uh, like it did pre-COVID. It means the end of two years of strict rules regarding masks, testing, and social distancing does leave the door open for potential changes down the road. All right, we're going to take another break here on CBS Sports. When we come back, once considered a day two kid, Malik Willis gaining massive momentum in the draft class. Could he be the first quarterback off the board? Our experts will discuss at the Combine next. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.